All right. I'm Matt Hill. I'm a curriculum designer at MRU. This is day four uh, slides of our money and inflation unit plan. And I will be walking through the slides just to give you an idea of what we were thinking on um, each slide. All right. So to motivate um, this, uh, this day, what we're trying to do in this day is how do we measure inflation? So we've talked about money how we got to the money that we currently have, the danger of that money, which is inflation, um, which we covered last uh, last lecture. Now we're going to get into the nitty gritty of how do we as a society or how does the government measure inflation? And there's a few, I wouldn't say difficult mathematic uh, mathematical concepts, but we sort of have to cover them if we're covering uh, what, uh, what inflation is. So you're just sort of going to have to, you know, depending on the level of your students, kind of walk through um, these these concepts. And so with the bell ringer, what we're after is the difference between a weighted average and an average. And how, you know, we approach it in the unit plan is we say, all right, all right, class, I would like to compare this class's performance to last year's class's performance. What should I look at? You know, should I look at the quizzes? Should I look at the tests? Should I look at attendance, homework? And hopefully what you get back is you should look at the grades. You, know, you should look at what was the grade, you know, last year? What is the grade this year? And a grade, hopefully in your class for this for this example to be relevant, um, a grade is a weighted average. Things are worth different amounts. So in this uh, schema that we put up here, you feel free to edit this and make it your own scheme. Uh, um to make it super relevant, you know, the scheme that we've cooked up here, you know, homework is worth 10 points or 10% of the grade, quiz is 20, participation 10, and a test 60. And so if you have a hypothetical student that got a 90% on the homework, 80% on the quiz, 100% on participation, 70% on the test, what would their grade be? All right. And so we're sort of really trying to spell this out. So if you got a 90% on the homework, that would be equivalent of nine points, 80% on the quiz that was worth 20 points, you would get 16 points, okay? And so on. And then your overall grade in the class, add those up, a 77%. So your grade is a weighted average. Homework isn't worth the same as a test. You know, an average would be, look, if I have four students and I just want to know what the average grade in the class, and this are these are the students' grades, A, B, C, B, was the average grade in the class, I just take the grade point averages, and then do a simple average. Okay, so the average grade here in this class would be a B. Okay, and so, you know, however you want to walk through that example, again, hopefully you get this discussion about how, how should I compare grades? You know, it doesn't really make sense just to use one item, quizzes or this. You want to use the overall grade, which is a weighted average to get the students thinking, all right, this difference between average and weighted average. It is kind of a difficult concept. Um, so, you know, if you want to go through it slower, but you know, that is the key takeaway. Now it's fun about this. This is the fun part is we get to show you, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the trends in grade inflation. So students may like this, you could see just, you know, this is for the, uh, this is uh, students entering college, just the huge increase in, um, high grades, it's other ways of looking at this. This is Harvard, always fun to dunk on Harvard. Um, you know, this is, you know, the average GPA at Harvard from 1889 to 2002. And you can see just the steady rampant uh, grade uh, inflation. All right. So what about real inflation? All right. So with real inflation, the analogy to, you know, the, uh, the grades is, well, we don't want to just look at, we don't want to look at just one good. We don't want to look at just one item you know compare that price over time that would be like just looking at homework grades we want to use a weighted average of goods and services that people actually buy okay and we want to weight things higher that you know people buy more of um and weight things lower that people buy less of to get this sort of you know composite of how prices are changing over time that's what we're after when we're trying to measure inflation how are prices changing over the time? Going up, going down. If they're going up, how much are they going up by? Then we'll go into our video, our MRU, our MRU video that really goes through how 
inflation is measured in depth, you know, using, you know, the CPI, the consumer price um, index, you play the video and pause the video at certain points. We want to pause the video here to, again, do a mathematical concept, percent change, which again, students, you know, sometimes we're like, okay, yeah, this is all, you know, we all know what percent changes are. And students don't know, don't necessarily know. So you want to kind of take a, take a step back and say, okay, what is a percent change? All right. This is how you calculate it. It's basically in percent terms, how much something has gone up over time or down in this case. Okay. And inflation is the percent change in the CPI. All right. And so that is how we measure um, inflation. But again, you know, doing this weighted average in the beginning and then the percent changes here, you know, you're going to have to cover some difficult concepts, but I mean, that's, that's how inflation's, you know, calculated. Again, you want to pause at um, 323. Show them this chart and um, have them answer some questions in their student um, activity sheet. All right, I'm going to step back and have a discussion. You know, after after we've after after we've sort of hopefully have a grasp of how inflation is calculated, and ask, all right, what is you know what's the primary difference between a dollar from 1950 say and a dollar um, today? Like you know, theoretically, the dollar is you know still the same, still looks the same. You know, maybe the you know the the one from the present's a little crisper, but you know, it's the same dollar. So what really has changed? And hopefully, you know, whatever the answers are, trying to guide the discussion to well, they can buy different things. You know, they can't buy the same things um, that you could buy in 1950. We're going to need more detail because of inflation, because prices have gone up and up and up. You know, over time. The dollar today is worth less. That dollar from 1950 has much more uh, purchasing power. And so for this reason that, you know, dollars in the past are not the same as dollars in the present. What we always need to do when we are comparing prices from two different time periods is adjust them for inflation to make them comparable. Okay. So like, you know, a Snickers from... 2023, you know, cost, I don't know what a stickers cost, a dollar. I don't know. I'm old. I can't, you know, I can't eat, eat, eat candy like I used to. Not, I'm not buying a lot of Snickers bar. Let's say it costs a dollar and let's say it cost five cents in 1950. Well, has it really gone up in price? You may say, yes, of course it's gone up in price. It went from five cents to a dollar, but not necessarily. You know, after we adjust for inflation, you know, that will tell us, has it really gone up in price, you know? And so the way you adjust for inflation is this formula here. You get the CPIs from the relevant years and you take the dollar amount, say that dollar amount in 1950, say it's five cents, multiply it by the CPI today, divide if I'm interested in how much, you know, five cents from 1950 would be today, multiply by the CPI today, divide by the CPI in 1950. That'll tell me, okay, five cents in 1950 is equivalent to what? Um, today. So this is the formula that you work work with to adjust prices over time. Because again, you know, the purchasing power of the dollar has changed. So anytime you're comparing prices, you need to do this adjustment. It doesn't really tell you, um, you know, without that, it's really hard to make comparisons. You know, what does it mean that Gone with the Wind, you know, the most, you know, popular movie of 1939, I think it was 1939. I don't know. Um, you know, made whatever it made, $100 million or something like that. You know, what does that mean? You know, in today's terms, you need to adjust the amount for uh, inflation. Okay. So here are some famous uh, prices. Coke cost five cents from 1886 to 1959. That actually st it stayed as, as five cents for all those years. This is largely due to like advertising campaigns and, you know, vending machine technology. Or another one, there's a famous ransom. Uh, from 1974, six million dollars. So let's adjust these prices to see what does that mean in present day dollars. Okay. So that means in 1886, a cost in present day dollars, you know, it was a nickel in 1886. That's about a dollar sixty three. Now by 1959, a nickel in 1959 is about fifty cents in today's dollar. Okay. And this ransom, we might say six million in 1970 or 1974. That's not six million. I mean, it's a lot, but you know, it's not not that much. But once we address for inflation, this was a ransom of you know 
thirty-six million dollars. I mean, that's a that's a that's a good chunk of change. Okay. Then we have this great interactive practice um, where students are given two very similar goods from different time periods. They're given the CPIs, the relevant CPIs, and they have to figure out, okay, which is cheaper after you adjust for inflation, which is cheaper. And so there's a bunch of these that they can compare. There's a lot of fun ones. We got tooth fairy teeth, like how much the tooth fairy pays for teeth. Uh, what else we got there? We have the Model T uh, compared to a uh, 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 present day car. We got the Big Mac, lots of fun ones for your students uh, to do. And then if they're interested, once we adjust for inflation, these are uh, uh, these are things that have gone up in price, you know, above, and then things that have gone down in price down here. It's just sort of the long run trends in different goods. Some things have gone up. Some things like college tuition have increased faster than inflation. Some things like televisions have really, you know, declined in price relative to uh, inflation. Okay. All right. And so with the lesson, so we've learned how to calculate uh, inflation and then how to adjust prices or how the, how the, we've learned how the government calculates inflation. And then we've learned how to adjust prices using those, that, no, that number, the CPI, how to compare prices over time. And for an exit ticket, they got to think of something that they own, you know, sort of look at this graph. Hey, do, do I think this has gone up in price or down in price? If you don't already have the unit plan, there is a link on screen. Or if you'd like to move to the next day, check out the next walkthrough video.